Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome everyone to another edition of Football Fan Zone. Yeah, I have my boy with me, IK. What's going on, my boy? I'm good, man. Just yeah, chilling, looking at the transfer window every day. <laughs> That's doing all scrums, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Guys have been coming so, but like, that's been on ninety percent for the past three or four weeks, man. That's like it was, like it's dragging too much, but we'll see. I think, yeah, I think, I think, I think that one is done already. You know, that one is done, right? Yeah. It's done. It's done. But yeah, big Liverpool fan. Your um, your season did not go too well, right? So talk to me about how you felt in the beginning of the season. Well, beginning of the season, um, you know, we had we had injury crisis, right? I think Thiago right. had an injury, and there was a kind of decline, right? And we didn't sign. I was hoping we could sign someone, right? In the beginning of the season, like okay, sign a midfielder or something. But club gave a presser like some months after the the end of the season now, because we played a lot of games, quadruple and the rest. Now we literally right. played all the games we could play last season. So it was more like give them chance, like these guys are all good now. Like, how do you want me to improve on the squad? When there had been signs of improvement, like you lost in you are now done. You refused to get a replacement and for like three seasons and everything just spiraled down from there man and you know season i was still hopeful that okay you know what because because of the world cup i felt that the season was going to have two two parts right the teams that go to the, the players that go to work on might be injuries and stuff and drop off form you know mm -hmm. so the second half of the season liverpool could pick up form and if you notice like Towards the World Cup, when we're getting close to the World Cup time, right? Liverpool started like winning games. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool. We're there. Then after that, it declined again. There was no January transfer window. The right thing we should have done was to sign a good midfielder. I even forgot about Atomelu. Yeah. <laughs> we signed him in, in Juve. From Juve. From right? Juve in the, in the summer transfer window. Which was bad. Like it was literally we waited last minute. Then okay, who can we get for free? And we did the same thing like, too. We did the same thing for Zakaria. And, and it was a bad business. Yeah. I don't know if you guys got Saul too like that. I think you guys got Saul. Yeah, too, almost like the same thing. Yeah, almost the same thing for yeah, like, it was, it last was just bad business. Yeah, it was bad business. Everybody looked at the YouTube clips. Okay, he plays like a Tiago. They can interchange since Tiago couldn't, you know, drop in a lot of minutes and the rest. So he came in, he only played, I think, 20 minutes against Napoli in the Champions League, and that was it. He just came to steal money, and it was just crazy. <laughs> I feel like if Liverpool signed a good midfielder, just one, we probably would have made top four. You know? Okay, yeah, because um, you guys you guys, you guys, guys had a charge towards the end of the season. Uh, you yeah. almost had it, you know, but it was too little too late. It, it felt like, late, yeah, the deal was already done. But at, at any point this season, did you feel like Klopp, lost his sauce a little bit because there was a lot of talk like oh man this is the end of the era as Klopp you know come to as he hit the roadblock did you feel that way as a Liverpool fan at any point um, I feel like I feel the players were burnt out obviously played how many games last year? maybe 68 games or something like that I didn't feel he lost so what I feel was we didn't improve in the past when we needed to improve because I feel like the squad initially when we were playing at a high level it was more of a case of how can you improve the squad when everybody's at the same age gap and you don't want to mess up chemistry? Right. But once players started leaving and things were dropping, should have refreshed. There were like two or three players that should have gone. I remember when Michael Edwards wanted Henderson to leave and they were like, no, Henderson went on a PR campaign and I know something about the British media. They support their own, which is good, man. I wish maybe Nigerians too could be like that, but... They kind of lied to themselves about their players, and I feel Henderson should have been gone. And maybe if he left, someone else could have come in. And even Muna, Muna that we are even losing now, club wanted him to still be there, man. And he's just there taking people's opportunities and wages. I feel like that's that's how I feel. Like okay, club, I don't understand what is going on. And sometimes another thing I feel he maybe he lost the source was in the formation, right? Because the the players we had couldn't play at the intensity we needed to. To play with the 43 formation. So I think we played better when we were playing in 4 4 2. The team was a bit balanced and they were kind of maybe restructuring the defense and they were playing it safe, which worked for us. Then you just play long balls to Nunes. 
But something about Nunez, like Nunez is efficient when all he needs to do is think of shooting and passing. That's all. But when you're asking him to start combining and doing link-up play, hold up, but that's not his game. You create space for him. You send the ball to the channels or spaces for him, let him attack. That's when he's deadly. If you look at most of his goals and assists, there were more actions where he was either he could just pass once or he could shoot. Right. That's how he plays, man. Yeah, so you talk, you touched on Nunes. I know you guys lost, obviously, Sergio Mane. Um, you yeah. lost uh, Femio this season. Um, yeah. Let us... This season, actually, let, let me backtrack a little, right? Um, yeah. Van Dijk and Trent. Um, mm -hmm. To me, it felt like the worst I've seen them. Uh, you I think you touched on some of the reasons when we spoke personally. Can you shed yeah. some light on what happened? Why did, why was he so bad for them at some point? Like, you know, people were actually pinpointing them as the reasons why Liverpool were playing the way they were playing. I think the Trent, the Trent issue was, one, I think he was scoring too many, a lot of defensive actions. If you notice, it seemed that presses, right? If you press a lot, you use a lot of energy. So it was more of a case where when we win the ball back, we couldn't like hold on to the ball. That's why if you notice, like Barcelona, as good as they were during the Tiki Taka era, it was more of they could press you. But when you have the ball most of the time, the ball is the one doing the work. You're just combining. So if maybe Trent presses hard and he wins the ball, then the midfielder maybe you give to Henderson and he just hoofs the ball into the sky and the other team gets the ball. There's space on the right channel for them right. to, you know, attack. And we're now asking Henderson to, like, okay, if you can't be giving us a good shift in the right midfield and you can't even, your, creativ your creativity is not at a high level, why don't you just cover for, for, for trends? Right. I know normally the Liverpool formation, you don't really require the midfielder, the right, the eight, the number eight to cover for the center, the right back. But in, maybe like in a game, he could do that like two or three times. But we just couldn't hold on to the ball. And Trent was easily the target. Okay, he's bad. He's this. And if you notice, when they changed the formation to the box midfield, the 3-4-3, three, three, mm -hmm. Trent now doesn't have to go forward anymore. Like, he plays deeper. So, like, is it for him to, if there's a breakdown in transition, if, when, because most times they lose the ball, it's like a transition. So, Trent has to move yeah. to the right. And one more thing, I remember at the start of the season, Trent wasn't playing on the far, he wasn't playing, uh, they weren't stretching the midfield. Um, they weren't, their style of play wasn't wide in the sense that in the beginning of the season, Salah was playing close to the touchline. So if you notice, most of the combination, Salah was always, it was always Salah against one or three guys, two to three guys most of the time. And Henderson was now tucked in behind the box eighteen. So Henderson, was, um, I said, no Henderson, I'm um, Trent. Trent was playing behind the box eighteen. So it was basically a sense of, okay, he plays behind the box eighteen and he tries to just drop crosses for like Nunez in the space behind the defensive line. The box it's in that second yeah. small part uh, that's yeah. when he was trying to six year his book, yeah. and salah so far because of that because most times if you beat the first guy the second guy is there if you beat the second guy they're already like swarming him it was easy to defend and i feel when they tweaked him for the formation yeah things got better yeah it was much more better at, at that point uh let's yeah. take it to some of the highlights of of the season for you seven new went to Manchester United, man. <laughs> Nobody that saw was, that coming. Nobody yeah, saw that. Yeah, that was great. That game was great. I remember that time it was doing, we were playing, I think we played, we, we're having, we're going to face Man U, Man City, and um, I can't remember the third team. I think Man U, Man City, Arsenal, or Chelsea. We had like a very weird fixture line during that period, and they stepped up, but the Liverpool way, man, you win 7-0, the next, next game, game against Bournemouth. Yeah. Salah missed. I think Salah missed the penalty. Van Dijk mm -hmm. had a clear chance to know the ball and he just was complaining like they were fouling you. Like, nigga, you're big. How can a small guy prevent you from knowing <laughs> the ball into the net? Like, he was playing soft. And that, yeah. that just that just summarized our season. We couldn't sustain our our high our highlights for a period of time. Yeah. It was but, um, the end of that we we kind of beat. yeah you guys gave me momentum back towards the end of the season well you saw man city and arsenal go for the title and yeah. i remember talking to you and you're like now nah, arsenal fans know what it feels like yeah, to, grow up against, <laughs> to grow up against to grow up against a team like man city yes, do you think you guys you guys are ever going to get back to that you know to that yeah level? We, we, we can get to that level it's 
is there. I just feel like they still need like three more signings because it seemed the Liverpool team, even last season, the reason why we didn't win the quadruple, we just needed to make little adjustments to push to take us to the next level, like put, move the needle a bit. Like the midfield, if Liverpool signed a good midfielder that could just come in and bring something different, yes, we could have done it. Because I remember that final. How can you be playing in final against Madrid and your midfield? You're having um, Keita. Keita hasn't played a good game for a while. And you have Henderson. I was always clamoring like, you, we can't have Henderson starting this final. And our backup, Milner, like even this season, you saw how um, we were losing games and you were bringing Milner to come and do what? <laughs> like Milner is someone that can play as your right back. Yeah, and do a good job, but if you are putting him in advanced positions, he becomes brain dead. Yeah, so he, he, he lost just, uh, he lost the legs and the creativity a long time ago. Yeah. It's a good, I think it's a good option to have in the squad, but not for he's games a good like squad that. Player. Yeah, yeah, he's a, good squad uh, a big one, the end of an era, Bobby Firmino. Are you feeling yeah, that, man? It's really sad. I think that was our most important player, and I remember when he came to Liverpool, Brenda Rogers, a very smart coach was playing as a wing back <laughs> and it was it was funny we didn't even understand like what's this guy good at then club comes in plays him as a second striker before we knew it that was the story of Bobby Femino good footballer self I think that's the most selfless player I've seen yeah very underrated time. too like you need to yeah, understand uh, football to a level to understand like the balance that he brings to that he brought to that Liverpool team that brings yeah. me to Sergio Mane there's a big disconnect for me. Of course, I'm just I'm not a Liverpool fan. I'm outside looking in. But Sergio Mane and Bobby Firmino, I felt like they got to different receptions when or different goodbye ceremonies when they left. Yeah. As a Liverpool fan, can you put that into perspective? Who is more important to you, Firmino or, or Mane? Firmino won 100 times, man. Firmino over Mane. Mane hasn't been playing like the last season that we you know did well. Mane wasn't playing like his his form was dropping. You know, so what happened last thing was there was just a period of time. I think in January, February, he now picked and he played well during that period of time. And after that, he started, you know, doing one or twos. So for me, I think the money situation with the transfer was money didn't tell them beforehand that you I'm leaving. It was he waited until the final. So nobody could really prepare. You know, because I think Femino already told club that you and that's that's also tells you the kind of person Femino is. Femino looked at the whole situation like I am old, I can't run anymore. Like before, like the the the, the Premier League is tasking like to be running and playing at a high level with the pace. It was like you know what? Let me leave the club. Let these young guys have guys chance to shoot their game and do do something, man. So I feel like Sadumani, if he told them like maybe in January that I want to leave. Then everybody would have mentally prepared for him leaving because he too was a very important player. It was Mane that was the second guy, and he was the one that even took us to the. He made us qualify for Champions League before Salah came in, and the rest was history. Right. 